Hello everyone. Welcome to this three-part video series, Elimination Communication and Early Potty Training. I'm Carrie Cusson DeFusco. I am a social worker. I am a yoga teacher. I am a mother and I am experienced in elimination communication and early potty training firsthand. So as we dive into this series, this first video is going to be all about uh, sort of debunking myths, getting into the history of potty training, and moving through um, ways that cultures around the world have been potty training and practicing elimination communication um, pretty much since the beginning of time. Okay, so let's dive right in and we'll go first to the ideas and sort of just like the beliefs that we are going to move forward with. Um, EC is rooted in an instinctual flow of communication and can begin at birth. So elimination communication is essentially starting to learn your child's cues for having to go to the toilet. And of course, they're starting to go in a diaper and they don't have to though. Some people who do EC don't ever use diapers. They use lots of different methods, um, which I don't know, we need to get into too deeply here. I think most of us are using diapers most of the time, or at least part of the time, especially when our babies are very small. Um, so essentially when baby is starting to go, you just start to observe them and watch that, oh, they're they're going number one, or I can tell they're about to go number two, or they are going number two. And you're just starting to understand your baby's cues. And from that place, you can begin bringing them to the potty and trying to, to catch um, whatever they are wanting to uh, release from their bodies. And so for me, I started this when um, my baby was two weeks old, which even back then, I was like, what am I doing? This is absolutely crazy. Uh, but it's a lot of that social conditioning that we're not used to, right? Babies go in diapers, and they do until they're ready to, to be toilet trained. And, you know, they're going to be ready when they tell us they're ready. Uh, so it's, it's a huge um, internal shift to practice this with your baby. And, of course, friends and family are going to have things to say. Um, as well. And it's just something to practice confidently and without fear of judgment um, and hopefully with support from other people in your life as well. Um, so in the next video, I'm going to get more into the details about EC and sort of like when to put them over the toilet and, and learning their cues and, and things like that. Um, but for today, we're just leave it here that it's rooted in an instinctual flow of communication. So, so many parents and caregivers know when their child is going, they can tell. <laughs> and um, oftentimes that is swiftly followed by a diaper change. So it's like, oh, we saw them go and now we're going to clean them up. Um, so we're already communicating in that way. We're learning their cries for hunger, um, for discomfort, for loneliness, and we're starting to distinguish between those even when they are really, really small and not yet verbal. So communication just blossoms and grows um, into what we know is our verbal communication as they get older and they can start talking. But we all know and can sense that communication is happening um, at a very, very early stage in life. And so potty training is different than EC in that um, there is more of um, the ability for the child to cue very directly um, or starting to be able to go independently. Um, but usually 
potty training can happen anywhere between 12 and 18 months, or you can start the process in a gentle and non-coercive uh, manner. So that even for us might sound really early. Um, we're so used to just waiting until at least age two or older. Uh, but it's really interesting that in just a couple of generations, we've lost the cultural knowledge to help our children reach toilet independence sooner. And so, right, in the 19, uh, early 1900s, toilet training was starting to peak and move towards 12 months and sort of plateaued at 12 months between 1957 and 1960 or so. Um, and then from there, we started to see um, how the impact of diaper companies, um, certain ones in particular, started to impact our child's, uh, and our country specifically, the age at which we were beginning potty training, right? So there were campaigns um, about readiness, right? So one of the myths that we hope to debunk is that a child must be ready before they start potty training. And so the fact is that before disposables were invented in the 1970s, most babies in Western culture started using a potty as soon as they could sit up. And so 40% of babies were out of diapers at 12 months and 83% were fully, fully potty trained by 18 months. And so many similar statistics exist for other westernized cultures such as North America and Canada. And so the evidence suggests that children are capable of potty training from around 18 months and that sort of the best time to stop using or relying upon diapers is between 18 uh, and 30 months at least. And so the concept of readiness, let's see, let's move here. All right, so the concept of readiness was originally proposed by a pediatrician named Terry Brazelton, who developed his theory in the 1960s. And so the ideas um, underpinning readiness are uh, sensical, they, they make sense. They're not super well defined um, in the literature, which can be really confusing for parents and result in missing like key markers, which can indicate the perfect time for your child to stop using diapers, right? Every child is going to be different. So even saying 12 months for your child, it might not be more until 19 months or 20 uh, or closer to 24, but every child is going to be different. I know a child who uh, didn't use diapers from the age of eight months on, and so it's, it's different for everyone. Um, so the conflict here is that Brazelton was later paid to endorse Pampers, and so Many researchers and authors argue that this concept of readiness was used as a marketing ploy promoting by the disposable diaper companies to encourage parents to purchase their product for longer. Okay, and so that's just important fact to know, I think, about our history. Um, when we get into history about anything, there's a reason why we want to dive deeper and see all sides so that we can make the best and most informed choices for, uh, for ourselves. And so we've trained our babies to go to the bathroom in their diapers for years. And so another myth is that early potty training can cause constipation, withholding, toileting, refusal, and psychological damage. So that's some heavy stuff, right? That's a lot of fear that we've been sort of fed that if we do this too early, we could really mess things up. And so the fact is that it's the way that a child is potty trained that counts and not necessarily how soon you start. So using a gentle approach that works at your child's own pace doesn't cause these problems. And so there's no proven link in the research between constipation, withholding, toileting refusal, and early potty training. So instead, early potty training is actually shown to reduce the risk of constipation, stool holding, and toileting refusal. And so research that shows starting to learn potty skills even as early as birth has a lot of benefits. 
So when done gently and in response to a child's natural instincts, infants can be potty trained by 12 months with no reported side effects and can be potty independent by 24 months old. And so things that might be, or things that are proven in the research to be more harmful during this process is provoking, voiding by running the tap, encouraging pushing, uh, power struggles, and the use of rewards and punishment. And many of these problems can be avoided by starting early and ensuring that potting is a normal part of your everyday routine. And so for me, my personal sort of anecdotal story is that having a potty during diaper changes, right? I relied on diapers until uh, I think 14 or 15 months. So we were using diapers, but at every diaper change, just in case he had to go a little bit more or we were sort of in that window of of him needing to go, um, the, the little small potty was right there. And so we would sit. Uh, he would practice going. If he did go, we would start to make these cueing sounds and just sort of communicating like you're going to the bathroom right now. And so they start to create those neural connections at a really early age and understand that this is a good place for you to put the things that are coming out of your body. Okay, so another myth is that early potty training can damage the bladder. Potty training voiding, uh, regular, excuse me, regular potty voiding protects the bladder and supports healthy development of sphincter control from a very young age. Potty training between 15 and 24 months reduces the risk of bladder and wetting problems and improves bladder function. So remember that the bladder is a muscle. So using it regularly in a conscious way strengthens it and ensures a well-functioning messaging system between the brain and the body to help develop awareness and control. And so research shows that sphincter control is present from birth and that children can learn to co-coordinate going to the bathroom by nine months of age, going number one. Our next myth is that our child should decide when to potty train. So this is sort of that readiness myth. And when it comes to potty training, experts propose that it should be done at the child's own pace. However, research shows that when parents lead the process, it is completed quicker. So the readiness idea in my experience and many others' experience is really the readiness of the caregiver or the parent and them really committing to this change of their lifestyle and this change for their child using the potty. And so the risk of problems developing are reduced when parents devote time and consistent daily effort to potty training. So children's interest in the potty is directly related to the onset of potty training. There's not an innate readiness. In other words, your child will be interested in the potty if you help nurture that interest, again, in a gentle and non-coercive way. And they are capable of potty training if you teach them the necessary skills. So taking a liberal attitude to potty training is shown to increase the risk of developing toileting problems later on and results in a delay in training completion, right? So if you're just waiting for your child to be ready and to tell you and we're not sort of being more engaging and more active in the process, then this can really delay the age at which your child is potty trained. So initiating potty training after 24 months is associated with a higher risk of daytime wetting, delayed bladder control, and relapse. So in particular, postponement of potty training beyond age three creates social, economic, and environmental problems. So you're spending money on diapering until your child is three. You might even find that in social settings, your child becomes uncomfortable. Maybe they're a little bit older and they're starting to realize that other people are trained and they are just in this habit and it becomes sort of scary sometimes um, to to go to the bathroom. And so we can really 
uh, sort of remove a lot of these obstacles and these challenges by starting the process a little bit earlier before that age of independence really hits. So another myth is that children can't be dry at night until their hormones are properly developed. So the fact is that hormones at night help suppress urine production by around 50%, and for the vast majority of children, these hormones work very effectively. Research shows that children who are dry in the day are very likely to be capable of being dry at night. And babies can be dry at night from six months if they regularly use a potty instead of a diaper. Another myth, and this one I can sort of speak to again um, in a personal way, that if you start potty training later, it will be done quicker. And so in my experience, it was a lot of work to do elimination communication and to be pottying my child at such a young age. However, by waiting until they're later, uh, until they're older, does not necessarily mean it's going to be done quicker just because they're older. And so the fact is that the average time it takes to potty train is the same, whether your child is 19 to 24 months or after 25 months. So potty training after age three is shown to increase the risk of wetting and soiling problems uh, developing. And so early potty training is associated with early attainment of both day and nighttime urinary incontinence and not associated with bladder dysfunction. So children begin, who begin potty training earlier asked to use the potty verbally and non-verbally a lot sooner. So this is probably a lot of information that is brand new. And so something that is really interesting again to remind ourselves is that diapering around the world has been this way for centuries, right? So before the creation of disposable diapers, even um, cloth diapering, right? Parents around the world were having to use their instincts and different methods to potty their children, right? Even women in different cultures, um, like in India and other places around the world where baby wearing is a lot more of the norm, especially if mom is um, having to work or support the family outside of the home and baby stays with them, um, they start to really create that and foster that sense of communication and understand that this little wiggle is like a pee pee dance or that sound means that they have to go. And so essentially women for centuries and caregivers for centuries have been taking babies out of um, their carrier or, you know, if they're um, free from that space and learning their cues and placing them over a pot or putting them in the appropriate place to uh, relieve themselves. And so in the book Diaper Free by Ingrid Bauer, she writes, Throughout most of human existence, parents have cared for their babies hygienically without relying on diapers. In many cultures around the world, mothers still know how to understand and respond to their infant's elimination needs to keep them clean and content. So keeping in mind that this Wait for Readiness campaign that was created by diaper companies was something that has really permeated every corner of our culture and it's really entered our collective subconscious. We now have more research to know and understand that early potty training as early as from birth through age two is not something that is going to harm or damage our child in any way. Though we have this campaign has been so successful, we now live in doubt of our children's capabilities and we live in fear of damaging our children if we start the potty training process too soon. Right? There's a lot of pressure through um, our education system, our caregiving system, through daycares and schools um, to delay potty training and the pressure from partners, caregivers and other parents and even healthcare workers. This pressure is meant with the best of intentions and your child's best interests in mind, but it's often coming from a place of misinformation, right? The cultural sub collective subconscious of 
uh, the 1960s that has really created our view and um, our inability to trust our instincts and to trust our children's instincts.